So this is just a quick uh, fun tutorial and we're going to create this effect here. And it's quite simple to achieve, so I'm just going to get started. I'm going to create a sphere and I'm going to set the radius to 300, zoom out a bit. I'm going to create a cloner and another sphere. Uh, the second sphere I'm going to make uh, smaller. I'm just going to move it up. And I'm just going to call this S sphere for small sphere. And then the large one here, um, I'm going to call it L sphere for large sphere. I'm going to set them to icosahedron, which basically means um, they use these types of uh, triangles. A small sphere, I'm just going to reduce the segments down to um, maybe eight. Okay. I'm going to drop the small sphere into the cloner. I'm going to set the cloner to radial. And I'm just going to increase the radius here till the cloners um, orbit the large sphere. And I'm going to increase the count to maybe 16. So next, uh, I need to add some dynamics tags. So I'm just going to add tags, simulation tags, rigid body to the large sphere. And I want this to be a static mesh. So basically objects can collide with it, but it doesn't budge. So here under shape, I'm going to choose static mesh. And I'm going to click on the cloner, tags, simulation tags, rigid body. And here I'm going to set inherit tag to apply tag to children. Individual elements, all which means, which basically means that each cloner um, behaves kind of separately. Next, I'm just going to set the project settings gravity under dynamics um, general. I'm going to set the gravity to zero. And I'm just going to play this back. Nothing happens. That's because there's no forces in the scene. So next, I'm just going to add some forces, simulate I'm going to add an attractor and I'm going to set the strength to 1800. I'm just going to play this back and you can see the spheres are attracted to the larger sphere and they kind of start rolling around on the surface. That's because the attractor is right in this origin point here in the center of the circle. And because this large sphere is in the way, um, they're trying to get to it, but they can't. So they just kind of end up uh, traveling the surface. So I'm just going to add a few more forces, simulate particles uh, rotation and simulate particles turbulence. I'm just going to play with turbulence. Um, I'm going to increase the scale to maybe 100 and see what this does. Just adding a bit of randomness here, but it seems to take away from the attractor. So I might have to bump up the attractor to uh, 3000 maybe. And you don't have to follow these values exactly. They're just, um, we're just looking for a certain look. I went up to 6,000 there for the attractor. I'm just gonna add some rotation. So um, 44 maybe, the rotation, see what that does. You can see the rotations taking effect. And that's good, but I think we now need to increase the attraction um, I'm, I'm just going to go up to 15,000 now. That's better. And what you want is, you basically want them to kind of travel all um, surfaces. Like, there seems to be a blind spot here. I'm just going to increase the frames to 400. Just get some more animation in there. And I'm going to increase rotation to 88. Let's see what this does. Seems to be too strong now. So I'm just gonna go back down to about 30 and just increase the attraction to 20,000 now. And I think we just need a bit more turbulence basically. So I'm just gonna go to 50, see what this does. And that seems to get them moving all over the surface now. Um, let me just check this again. So yeah, that's pretty much the look I'm looking for. They're traveling uh, the entire surface. They're moving pretty quickly. 
and um, now we can basically use the tracer object. So I'm just going to go to mole graph tracer and for some reason it's uh, included turbulence in here, just delete that and drag and drop the cloner in here and uncheck trace vertices, it takes up too much memory and I'm just going to play this back and you'll see that each uh, cloner has a little trail behind it. Now I'm going to turn off visibility for the large sphere in both the editor and the renderer so just double click until you get the two red traffic lights and we can see um, our pattern kind of emerging now. Now right now this isn't rendering, uh, it's rendering the small spheres actually we, uh, we want to turn these off as well so I'm just going to double click two red lights and I'm going to create a sweep nerves drop in the tracer and then we need a cross section so I'm just going to create a circle drop that into the top there and it's way too thick so I'm just going to make the radius one centimeters and you can see that um, this will render now so we're almost there uh, the material I'm just going to do quickly it's basically just a gradient in the luminance channel so if you just create a new material drop that onto the cloner, sorry, the sweep, and then I'm just going to double click it, check luminance, just uncheck everything else, go into luminance, texture, gradient, and we've actually got presets. Um, if you just click this tiny little arrow here next to gradient, uh, we can load presets, and we've got some nice uh, pre-made gradients. I'm just going to click rainbow maybe, and if we render this, We've got all the colors of the rainbow. Um, I'm just going to wrap this up. So the sweep nerves, you might want to fiddle with scale. So you want to thin, you basically want it invisible at the beginning. And if you just control click in the middle, you can add an extra point. So you probably want this type of bell curve. Um, it's a bit hard to see, but um, these small kind of trails basically uh, fade out because the scale is zero towards the middle it fattens up and then it's zero at the end again it just gives it that nice kind of wispy look um, so yeah that's pretty much it um, I basically added a turntable camera animation just to kind of rotate around it um, I've got a separate tutorial for that um, it takes a lot of playing around so um, just keep fiddling with these kind of forces and settings till you get the look you want to um, achieve because it's good to basically just do your own thing instead of just copying values directly. So I'm just going to try and keep this under 10 minutes. I think that's everything uh, for this tutorial. And um, yeah, just render it out to After Effects, add some glow and um, get a camera kind of rotating around it slowly and it's a really nice effect. So that's the end of the tutorial and thanks for watching.